Now to make this wild blueberry wine, I'm going to need four pounds of wild blueberries. Now, of course, you can use regular blueberries. You can use fresh, frozen, organic, or in this case, wild blueberries. Now, as a disclaimer, I need to point out the fact that no, I did not wander across some field and stumble across a patch of wild blueberries growing and just help myself to four pounds of them. I, like most people, are going to buy them at the grocery store. Now then, how do I know that these are wild blueberries? It's simple. It says so right here on the package. I think it is faith value. What reason would they have to lie? Now then, next. I'm going to be using four and a half cups of sugar. Just plain white granulated sugar will do. I'm going to need one black tea bag. Now the black tea is going to act as our tannin substitute, which of course, if you don't know, is going to provide a little bit of astringency to our wine. I'm going to be using the juice of quarter of a lemon and the lemon is going to be acting as our acid blend substitute, which of course is going to add a little bit of brightness and acidity to our wine. This time around, I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Rouge wine yeast for no particular reason other than the fact that I just happen to have a lot of it. Kind of start using this stuff up. Now, if you don't have wine yeast, bread yeast still works. Speaking of bread yeast, we're going to be using anywhere from half to quarter of a teaspoon of bread yeast and the bread yeast is going to act as a yeast nutrient to feed our wine yeast uh, later on. It would be helpful if you had a couple of straining bags to, to hold our, our blueberries. Again, it's optional. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. I'm going to need one gallon of clean filtered water. I'm going to need a wide mouth fermenter to do our primary fermentation in and it's helpful because having a wide mouth means that we can get our straining bags into it and out of it when necessary. Now, if you don't have that kind of fermenter, a standard food grade bucket will also serve the same purpose. Now, in about a week's time, when our blueberries have done the raw to make our wine, we're going to transfer our liquid from our primary fermenter into our secondary carboy. Uh, this happens to be a four liter carboy. You can use a one gallon if that's what you have. Now you're going to need an airlock with bung. This particular bung is a number six bung, which fits most one gallon and four liter carboys quite nicely. Again, you'll also need an airlock for your primary fermenter, but seeing as how this particular model does have its own built in airlock, I won't need a bubbler type airlock for that. Now, of course, it would be helpful if you had a hydrometer handy, which will allow you to determine your starting gravity, which is used later on when you've got your ending gravity to determine how much alcohol you have made in your wine. Also, in case something goes wrong, this lets you know that things aren't moving as, as they should, and you can probably take steps to correct that. I'm going to need a good sized pot with a lid. Uh, this is an eight quart pot or something larger might be preferable uh, to hold all of our blueberries while they're on the stove. It would be helpful if you had a hydrometer with testing tube to help determine what our starting gravity or how much sugar is initially in our wine. And at the end of the process, how much sugar is no longer in our wine to help us determine how much alcohol we have produced in our wine. Now, of course, this is optional. Now, of course, as always, all of our equipment is going to be properly cleaned and sanitized using your favorite food grade sanitizer of choice, whether it's One Step or Star Sand or something equivalent. Just follow the manufacturer's instructions and make sure your equipment is clean enough so that you will not have any issues with bacteria or whatever later on. And that is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now, if your berries have been previously frozen, you might want to go ahead and thaw those out. And I'm going to use a colander to quickly rinse my blueberries. And let those drain just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and return these back to the pan. Getting as many of the berries in the pan as possible. 
Now, for those of you with straining bags, let's go ahead and get our berries into the bags. And with grid, tie these off. Let's go ahead and add in about half of our water. Okay, well, maybe a little bit more than half. Doesn't really matter. We just want enough in there to mostly cover our straining bags. We'll put the lid back on, and I want to bring this up to a boil. Now that our water has come up to a good rolling boil, we're going to go ahead and add in half a teaspoon of our bread yeast. And the reason for this is that we want to heat to kill off the bread yeast so that it will act as a yeast nutrient for our fermentation yeast, whether it's going to be wine yeast or another sample of uh, bread yeast. With that having been done, we can actually go ahead and turn off the heat. Don't need that anymore. And we can go ahead and add in our straining bags. The purpose of doing this is not to cook the fruit, but to kill off any wild yeast and to some degree, harmful bacteria that might have been clinging on to the outsides of the blueberries. Now with that having been done, we're gonna go ahead and take our black tea bag with no strings or labels and go ahead and drop that in. Again, the tea bag is going to be acting as our tannin substitute, which is going to add a little astringency to the wine later on. Put our lid back on, and we want to let the temperature come down just a little bit, and then we're going to go ahead and add in our sugar. Now that our wine has cooled down a little bit, we'll just go ahead and incorporate our sugar. While it's still hot, to help it Dissolve that much faster. And stir it in. Being careful not to destroy our tea bag because we don't want a lot of loose tea leaves floating around there that we got to deal with later on. And you can squeeze down it on the blueberries a little bit. And put our lid back on and let that come down to room temperature. Now that our blueberry juice mixture has cooled down to room temperature, actually I just let it sit out overnight, I now want to transfer everything from the pot to the fermenter. Well, everything except that tea bag that's floating around in there. First thing I want to do, I'm going to mash down on these berries one last time, nice and good. And then I'm going to temporarily remove these straining bags. There we go. And yes, my hands have been sanitized. As has been the fermenter, as has been this spoon, as has been this bowl that I'm going to use. And as has been my strainer that I'm going to use shortly. So move that. And somewhere in there is a tea bag. There it is. We'll just go ahead and remove that. And now I want to transfer everything into the fermenter.
Now I've got the fermenter has got levels for gallon, gallon and a half, two gallons, two and a half gallons, and so forth. And the reason why I took out the bags is because I want to get a good reading on how much juice is actually in there. And that water that we saved from yesterday, we can now go ahead and add that in, bring our level up to where we want it to be, which means about a gallon. And with that having been done, through a little swirl, we can now do the following. We can go ahead and add in our acid blend substitute, which was a quarter of a slice of lemon, I'm using a strainer because I don't really want any seeds in there. All it takes is a good squeeze. I mean, you don't have to scrape off the sides or anything. That off to the side. And we can now go ahead and return our berries back into the fermenter. Along with any potential blueberry wine to be as well. For the moment, put our cover back on. And let me clean this mess up a little bit. Now, for those of you following at home with hydrometers, go ahead and take a, our initial hydrometer reading. Let us know just how much sugar we're starting out with. And it looks like our initial hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.090. Let's take the opportunity to go ahead and give our juice mixture one last good vigorous stir. Let's go ahead and aerate this as much as possible. Reason being is that our yeast, although it does need sugar, it also needs oxygen, at least initially. And with that having been done, we're going to go ahead and add in about a half a teaspoon of our, of our yeast, of our wine yeast. Now again, if you don't have wine yeast, you still got bread yeast. It will also work. We can spread that around somewhat evenly. If you want to aerate or bloom your yeast, please feel free. I happen to have success just sprinkling it on. Put my lid back on nice and tight. And I should point out that this fermenter does have a built-in airlock. If you don't have one who's put a built-in airlock, you're going to need one of these, all right? Now, we do need to label our creation so we know what it is we're making later on down the road. We are making a blueberry wine. We started it on this date. And our starting gravity was 1.090. Well, now that we've started making our blueberry wine, what do we do next? Well, for the next five to seven days, we want to put this someplace where it's nice, cool, and dark. Uh, after that time, we want to go ahead and remove our straining bags uh, with our basically spent fruit. We then want to turn around uh, later on down the road. Periodically, we want to do rackings, which is basically transferring everything above what will be the developing lease layer at the bottom into our secondary carboy and doing that periodically until our wine becomes clear. I usually go by nine to 12 months. I would then begin the process of degassing. I'll back sweeten it, I'll pasteurize it, I'll bottle it, cork it, label it, and then at some point I'll begin drinking it. Now all of these steps you can find as individual videos on my winemaking operations playlist on my channel page. You can check those out at any time. But in so far as this wine is concerned, uh, next time we see this will be 12 months hence when we do the 12 month tasting. See how it turned out. So until then, hey, if you like what you see here, please click on that to notify subscribe button. 
uh, become a member and or, or become a Patreon and help support this channel out. So I'll see you.